Shakari Richardson is starting to run some world breaking records in the 100 meter dash. And I want to break down some of her best exercises and training workouts so you guys can see what you can take from it to improve your speed. What's good, everybody? My name is Just Jamari. I'm a strength conditioning coach for about five years, training athletes to transform their athleticism. Let's get straight into the video. Getting straight into it, I am a little sick, so I apologize if I just sound weird and icky right now, if I'm a little bit stumbling over my words. The first thing she is doing is some type of clamshell, open up the hips, turn on the lateral glute, which is really important for acceleration because um, acceleration is a little more of a rotation exercise is not as linear as people like to say it is so you use a lot more lateral forces and lateral glute than you actually would think you would um, get good water obviously that's good okay on to the first thing this is probably gonna be a little bit part of her warm-up she's just doing basic a skips I like how she is getting a lot of deflection but she's focusing on kind of landing under that center mass so it's more of like a B skip um, landing under center mass is really important as a key position for sprinting. If you don't land under center mass, you're not going to use elastic energy properly. You're probably going to end up overstriding, which is going to use too much uh, hamstring, which you want more, um, less deceleration forces and more force production forces to prepare your body for it, right? Now she's actually getting to the A run, but once again, we're just landing under center mass with a dorsiflex foot, but now we're actually trying to strike the ground with a fast stride. Um, she's kind of just trying to it seems like she's focusing on popping off the ground like the forest lava, which is really good to decrease ground contact times, which is important for your sprinting. Um, all just real good, just basic coordination work, good for your warm up. It's not going to transform your speed or transform your technique, but it's good to kind of get the motor patterns into your body, especially early on in the workout. Now, straight leg skips. These are like kind of like a small bound, which is really good for recruiting the hamstring and recruiting that same sprinting pattern where you're trying to land under center mass. So all this stuff is kind of teaching the same type of stuff, but in different ways. Okay, now we're actually doing hopefully max effort in 200 meters or 150 sprints against other people. This is really important for improving speed endurance, even in the 100 meter, because after six seconds, which is usually gonna be around the 50 meter mark, you're going to be decelerating because you're not producing anaerobic power. Some people will accelerate at the end, like some of the most elite athletes, but that's because how they distribute energy. So when you actually race people for longer distances, you're training something called anaerobic endurance or what track coaches call speed endurance, which is really, really key for preventing as much deceleration and even possibly accelerating past six seconds, that second half of the 100 meter or for second half of the 200 meter, whatever it is, right? And they're going max effort, max intense, probably hopefully high rest. We can't really tell everything because we don't have the full picture. It's just, you know, some little clips, but that's really good. Um, I think they're probably going about 70 to 80 meters. It doesn't look like they're going a full 100, but definitely like some maximal 90% and up is gonna be really good for training that type of stuff. This video is actually a short, but it's a lot of clips. I'm gonna be pausing a lot and just breaking down what I see. Um, and you can actually probably get some really good exercises from this, right? This is just max effort sprints. It seems like there's some wickets to train and stride pattern, which is also really good, but it's clearly just max effort sprints. This resisted max effort sprints, which is doing out of block. Only 10 to 20% of your body weight is what you need, but max effort 20 meter sprints, 20 yard sprints, 30 meter sprints, even up to 40 yards of max effort sprinting with some resistance will help you develop more rate of force development as you keep going and keep the horizontal impulse that you need, which usually dissipates after about five to 10 yards for most athletes who are not that fast. So you're holding that force and generating more force over time, which is really, really important for developing more power, more force production, things that actually transfer to your sprinting. Then she seems like she's going a little bit heavier, which is good. Okay, here, I'm not sure what this is all about, but it's some type of like core anti-flexion, anti-rotation type of exercise. Um, it could even possibly be like some power type of like, you know, halfway type of med ball throw in a sense. This is resisted arm swings. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but it could be good for the core and for motor units, uh, I mean, motor patterning. So it's not that bad. Um, right here, we're getting into once again, yeah, max effort, band res uh, resisted sleds. It's really important that you either go tied sprints or resisted sprints. Those are like gonna be your best bang for buck exercises to improve your speed. Don't do a bunch of technique work all the time. You can do that on your off days or in your warm up, but don't spend 90% of your workout tiring yourself out from just doing technique work. Focus on the athletic traits you need to develop, the raw athletic traits and your technique will come with it. Here, you got another training video. Um, here we got another one, it's gonna be it looks like just another set of kind of like race patterning. So she has like some cones up of like what type of percent of intensity she's gonna go through certain parts. I know some coaches will have you like 
They'll have you go all out for the first 30 or for your dry phase, however long that is, 30 to 50 yards. And then after that, you're gonna actually relax and then kick it back up or vice versa. It depends on the coach on how they wanna like set up their patterning for the race, but everyone has their different intensities for like certain parts. So it seems like she's kinda doing like a max effort run, but it's just like, okay, we're gonna go all out for a dry phase. And then it seems like she calms down. And then it's like, okay, we're gonna accelerate here and then focus on turnover here, or turn up here. That's that type of stuff. If you really wanna be a really good track athlete, you focus on the little things like that. Those are the details you probably wanna emphasize. We're going to do a quick breakdown of her 10.57 so we can actually understand what made her so fast. She's in lane four right here uh, with the pinkish reddish hair, the fuchsia type of hair. We're going to get straight into the start and just break down what she's doing well and what you could repeat. So in the set position, which is once the butt comes up, she has hips above shoulders, which is key. That's really the most important thing you need to know. You want your neck to be relaxed in neutral position, and you don't want your entire center of mass to be falling in front of your shoulders because you'll be out of balance. You want to be comfortable. You do not want to be awkward to be fast. I've heard some coaches say that before. You should be uncomfortable to get out fast. Just be comfortable. It's not that complicated. Um, just so you can get out at a good 45 degree angle every single time. The first one was a huge arm swing. You even see with this girl too, the arm swing going all the way above the ear almost. And then sweeping the hands forward. This is really, really important for running fast. Um, we'll see a lot of external rotation of the hips. This is a, a lot of lateral rotation, which I don't know why coaches say this nowadays, but they want you to go as linear as possible. When you always see the fastest people in the world will always go side to side as they're going forward. You're gonna get a lot of lateral glutes and a lot of the entire glute need and max to get more horizontal force, but when you go linearly, you're really restricting your body in the hip internal and external rotation to run fast. So let your rotation be free. Every step's kind of wielding out and forward. And then also she's landing under center mass. Her ground contact times are fast, right? Look how she lands under center mass. If she was landing in front of her center mass, her heel will be hitting first, or she'll be landing very flat footed. She's kind of landing on the ball of her foot for literally 0.1, maybe 0.2 seconds, and pouncing it off the ground with a lot of force. This is the type of force you get from resistance sprints, hurdle hops, resistant pogos and jumps, not stuff that you're gonna get in a four second full range of motion squat. This is high force, high rate of force development, right? Then, another thing that's really important is that she's constantly driving her arms back. It is important to get a good arm swing forward, but if you excessively drive your arms up, your knee's actually gonna come up way too high, and you don't want excessive knee lift. You want your knee to go forward and back down so you can keep propelling your body forward. So she's driving her hands forward, but she's driving her arms excessively back, which is gonna get the opposite sling. So if your right arm goes back, your left glute is gonna activate very, very well, and that's gonna help with more force production. Here, her neck is neutral, her body's neutral, is a straight line. Even if we're not seeing the side to side, we don't need to, it's obvious. It's a straight line from her neck all the way to the end of the ground. This is a straight line, this is exactly what you want from every sprinter. Every single step you take should be a complete straight line from the neck all the way to the ankle. Um, even if the ankle's turned out, it's not a big deal. I've heard some people say that too, it's not a big deal. And she's relaxed, right? Her hands aren't all clenched up. She's not running like this, like a robot. She's being free, aligned rotation in the entire body and producing forwards down and under and back from your center of mass, right? Staying relaxed, staying relaxed, keeping her arms being consistent and back. And her arms are clenching up a little bit here, but that's not the biggest deal. She obviously ran a, a PR. Her knee lift is not that high. This is where people, I don't, I don't understand why we need this obsessive knee height. Her knee is probably just a little below parallel, maybe-ish, 90-ish degrees, but a little bit below, and she's attacking back down under the center mass. This is a really good angle here. We can actually see a lot. Straight, straight, neutral pelvis, neutral pelvis, neutral neck, and her arms are just fa fa failing black. Wow, I cannot talk, what just happened to me? And then landing under a center of mass every single time. This is the perfect sprinting position. Um, the only thing is like her knee, yeah, like this position right here where you're pushing back a little bit, the knee comes forward, and then we just keep attacking under center grouse, uh, under center mass. She knew what she was doing. She knew she was doing 10.57, very impressive. And I'll put this with the workout video so we kind of get a little bit more content for what she's doing. Good job. Also here, we could also see just a quick little breakdown. Um, very relaxed, right? She's breathing through her nose mainly, which I usually recommend for most people. You can breathe through your mouth. You also want to brace the core so I can understand some people kind of holding their breath a little bit, barely breathing out, and you're mainly just breathing through your nose. And then she's relaxed, like her entire muscles are very, very dense. And you can tell she is like a little tense in the shoulders a little bit, 
which some people work well with, some people don't do the best with. But for the most part, she's not shrugging her shoulders up. She's not, you know, clenching her teeth all throughout, you know, ridiculously. Like, she looks relaxed. And when you relax, you can actually produce elastic energy, right? When you're tense, you're using muscular force. And muscular force is not going to help you run 10.57. Elastic power is what helps you run 10.5, 10.6, 10.2s, right? So you need to be able to use elastic energy. And that comes from a constant state of relaxation and flow. If you enjoyed this video, we didn't get the most content in terms of what type of exercises she did. But two videos where you got a lot of exercises was from Noah Lyles and Usain Bolt. You can watch these two videos right there. I don't know why I can't talk today. I don't know how. I changed the shirt so fast but yeah they have a bunch of exercises right here you actually see like some full workouts we couldn't see too much from shikari but i still want to do a video just to congratulate her and kind of break down a little bit what she's doing that makes her so good um hope you guys enjoy check out speed academy or watch those videos see you guys later